Well welcome back. I'm going to uh, show you today how to uh, bottle the cider that has been brewing for the last uh, 10 days. So uh, it's fermented really well. It's down to a specific gravity of 1005 um, which is just fine. So what I'm doing at the moment is make sure every, all my equipment here is sterilised and I'm going to be using a, a selection of bottles today. Um, I've got some here which uh, have been cleaned out and got the labels off. These are just reusable bottles from uh, previous cider or beer. Uh, some glass ones and I've got quite a few of these uh, rather good plastic pet ones. I quite like these because they give me a good uh, measure of control on the process because I can tell and squeeze out all the air when I'm bottling it and then when it uh, has a secondary ferment you'll find that this will go really hard just like a glass bottle so you know then that at least you've got your secondary fermentation has worked okay so uh, so that's why I like to use a few of these on every brew that I do so I've sterilized the, uh, the main fermentation vessel over here which is going to have the uh, we're going to siphon off the cider into that one Right, so what I'm going to do is going to uh, take the cider from this fermentation vessel where it's been for the last 10 days and I'm going to put it, siphon it off into this one here which is just a cleaned and sterilised unit. So the pipe has been sterilised and I've also got this device here for, for actually sterilising the bottles. So my bottles are pretty clean, they've been washed already uh, these ones are new bottles, the plastic ones. And I've also got some some other glass bottles here, which I bought. Which are the, these are brand new as well. So they're very clean, but they still need sterilised. So I'm going to do, oh, do, these are well worth the money. They're quite quite cheap to get, and uh, they basically squirt squirt the solution, the sterilising solution, up into the bottle. So I usually do it four or five times, maybe half a dozen times. And it's no rinse steriliser, so I can just uh, put these straight onto the, the dryer over here and then just sit there like that. So I'll just continue doing that with a few of these, a few of these bottles. Fairly quick process, really. Just so save, save quite a lot of time over the old methods of soaking them under a water bath of sterilizer. Now, I've not had any problems with it; they, they work really well. As long as your bottles are clean and rinsed out when you finish with them, when you've in initially used them, then they'll be fine. As you can see, I've got a fair amount of bottles washed and ready to go. So no need to rinse these, I'm just using the, uh, the no rinse steriliser, which uh, I found to be excellent. I've also got um, a lot of, uh, also got a lot of bottle caps in here. I've got some of the, the uh, ones for the glass bottles and the ones for the plastic bottles. So they're in sterilising solution. So it's important, your steriliser lasts about an hour, so uh, it's important you get everything done within that sort of hour period. Right, so what I'm going to do now is just take the lid off that one, and uh, that's all clean, so I'm put that in there for the moment. Just going to lift the lid off here. I've still got my hydrometer in here. It's reading 1005. One, zero, zero, so I'm just going to take that out, give it a swirl. I'll pop that in the steriliser too for next time. Right, so what I'm going to do is going to use a siphon here. I like to use a long siphon right down to the, the bottom so we're not getting any extra oxygen in, into the cider. So I make sure my tap is closed. Very important. 
done with spilling out and then I'm just going to go in with a siphon I'll just put that right down to the bottom there and we'll just let it siphon, siphon out so you can see it's still uh, still cloudy, which is fine. It's not uh, it's not it's not really bad cloudy, but it's it's just how you'd expect it to be. The smell is really good. Uh, quite looking forward to trying that. When it gets down towards the bottom of the fermenter, then we need to just put a little bit of an angle on it. So just do that. Just tilt it a bit. Yeah, that's about it. There we go, so that's the siphon tube finished with. Put that in the sink to wash out. And uh, you can see in, in here we've got A good lot of yeast sediment there. Okay, so that needs to be cleaned out. Sort that out in a minute. And this is where we're going to do our bottling from. Let's make this lifting up. Like that. Put a lid back on it so we don't get anything in it, and we're ready to do our bottling. Well, this is the uh, little bottler unit that we've fitted onto the tap here. So I'm just going to open the tap up now, and that'll fill up with uh, cider. I'm going to try a glass of it, see what it's like. Let's try a little drop of it. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Nice acidity. I'm not going to alter that. Nice flavour to it. Yeah, that's going to be really good when it matures. Okay, what I've got now, we need to have something to start our secondary fermentation. So, what I use is, uh, is uh, sugar, just ordinary granulated sugar. I'm going to add this to add some hot water to this, get it to dissolve before I put it into the vessel, the fermentation vessel. And uh, the rate that I use is 5 grams per bottle, which is about a teaspoon per 500 ml bottle. So that equates to, to this, which is 190, 190 grams of sugar for the 19 litres. Okay, that's got our sugar dissolved nicely in the uh, fairly warm water you need to dissolve that amount of sugar. So uh, get that, get that, that'll add to the volume a little bit. But uh, so I'll just pour it in, and I'm going to stir it all up now. So it gets a good mix of the sugar right the way throughout each bottle of cider. It's a lot quicker than trying to put it in per bottle, so uh, it does work quite well. Give it a good stir around. Okay, I'll put the lid over again just to stop anything from getting in there. And uh, now I'm going to start the bottling process. I'm going to use this bit of kit. The uh, little bottler. I'll just come back a bit on the valve. It allows it to flow better. And basically you just let it flow through there. And you see it coming up in the bottle. 
You need to just let it go down. Running in. Yeah, that's perfect. I'll just continue doing that until I've got all the bottles done. Alright, so I've had these bottle caps sitting in the steriliser, so I'm just going to lift them out. Wash my hand, don't matter me really. And then I can uh, show you how the capper works. So, very simple, it's got a magnetic uh, thing in there. Just put the, the cap on and give it a push down, and that's it. Perfectly sealed. A bit far down, I'll have to change that. <laughs> change my setting for that one. So that's the thing we're having different, uh, different sizes of bottles. However, we can soon do that. Okay, I'm just going to continue with the rest of the bottles. Right, what I want to do with the uh, the plastic bottles, it's uh, it's always useful to just uh, squeeze and get get the uh, liquid right up to the top, then put on the lid and tighten them right up. And you see the bottle is still sort of squeezed in, so that will come out when secondary fermentation takes place and it'll become hard. So that's how you know that you've got a good fermentation going on. Well, as you can see, there are uh, quite a few bottles of cider there in uh, various different types of bottle. Uh, so we've got about, uh, about 40 of them, I think, out of our batch. So that's, uh, that's quite good. So it's going to be left in this airing cupboard for uh, at least a week. Um, about seven days is, 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 is adequate and then it'll be moved to a cold place where it'll be stored for at least three weeks really before trying it um, and it will get better for up, up to three months.